Please rise to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Village Board meeting of February 27, 2023. Roll call, please. The Pearls. Possession. Here. Giannotti. Here. Terry. Here. Stacy. Here. Krause. Here. Uh, in your packet, you have the minutes of the last meeting. Does anyone have any changes? Uh, so, in the concert series, one it indicates that the last band is midnight, but I don't think that's actually confirmed yet. So, we should probably list that as TV. to approve the minutes of last month with that change. I'll make a motion. All right. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call. Possession? Yes. Giannotti? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Krauss? Yes. Okay. There is no clerk's report. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the board? Okay. Under my report, um, I'm going to consider a motion to appoint Kelly Phipps to the Beecher, Beecher Youth Commission. We have several vacancies on the commission at the present time, and this will fill one of those uh, positions. So would someone make a motion to appoint Kelly Phipps to the Beecher Youth Commission? I'll motion. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? A second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. Krause? Yes. Stacy. Yes. Terry? Yes. Giannotti? Yes. Possession? Yes. Okay, um, since there are no committee reports tonight, I will do the report for the raffle car. We're going to consider proposals for the purchase of a raffle car for the 4th of, of July Commission. The Commission was presented with three proposals, two by Sutton Ford. One is a silver metallic Ford Escape in the amount of $28,236.74, and a black Ford Escape in the amount of $28,536.74, which may be sold at this point. And a proposal from Terry's firm for a red Ford Escape in the amount of $29,936. The commission all agreed that the red model would probably sell more tickets than the silver metallic model, but understand the importance of taking the lowest proposal. Therefore, they're recommending a preference for the red model, but allowing the village board to decide which vehicle to purchase. Action is at the discretion of the board. Please see the enclosed proposal. Did you have anything you'd like to... So, yeah, so everyone kind of uh, talked over it. Um, Todd and Marcy were both at the meeting, and we all kind of uh, were discussing it. Um, and just the fact of the, the little extra money that we're going to spend to get to that red one, we feel that we'd be able to make that back in ticket sales just because the eye catch of the car and everything like that, the red compared to the silver. Um, is there anyone that's got any direct questions about it at all? This is, I mean, I called, so I, I ended up having to do a little bit of legwork on this. I called eight to ten dealerships, and although there was like 30 cars that qualified when they found out we were cash buyers, the only current factory incentive, the only current factory incentive is a $1,600 credit for anyone who is applying for what they call flex buy, which is basically financing the car through Ford Credit. And as soon as I told them we were buying cash, all the cars disqualified except for these three. So it was like we had a huge pool. How do you want the auto show credit, huh? Because that auto show, no auto show credit? They don't have any, they don't do like anything right now because of how scarce the vehicles are. They're like offering most of the incentives for anything right now uh, are. That's what they say with the commercials. And this is at 22, right? Oh, yeah. Like well, online, and that's the thing. So like online price is 24 or 20. 200 for a car or whatever and then it's like oh yeah well that's if you're financing this and that and then by the time they add everything back in and they go yeah the financing credit's gone you're over thirty thousand so, dollars and these are 22 models They're these new. are all 22s yeah the 23s are like astronaut right but those are the ones that get the car show incentives of the 23s yeah so it's like these are this is a 20 both of these are 22 models and uh what we did was we decided to look and see what we could find 
the only vehicles that were qualifying under 30,000 were the Ford Escape, so that's the route we took, as we discussed with them. Uh, initially was that we were going to pick one vehicle and compare apples to apples. So these are both um, same model style and everything like that, although the red one does have a couple extras on it compared to the uh, silver. Um, but they are both Ford Escape S's, so they're, as far as model and stuff like that, they are the exact same uh, model style. So, um, so I think everyone knows how and not in favor I am of spending more money if we don't have to. Um, but I will say last year the car commission, this is the first year they had a car in a couple years and they knocked it out of the park. Um, you know, I was I was a little skeptical about having the car. I think the 50 50 raffle was fine. Um, but they asked for our support um, to back them to get the car and they got a car and I think that was the best year in like it was like the third best year ever in the yeah. entire history of the car. So I mean they put the work in, they did it. Not necessarily in favor of spending more money, but you know, the people who are doing this, are, I think, are going to work at it. They believe that the red car will bring more money in the end. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to support this. I think it's a good thing. You know, let them do their job. We trust them to do. We trust them to pick this out. Uh, you know, let them go work at it and do it. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. So, do I need a motion? Well, yeah, somebody needs to make a motion to... Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, for the purchase from Terry Ford for the Red Ford Escape in the amount of $29,936 uh, for the raffle car for the 4th of July. Motion. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Right, sir. Quick correction to the title fee. So it's actually going to be $29,590.48 because it's the title fee. What is it? It's uh, $29,590.48. And that extra is the title transfer. We didn't know that. Yes. Yes. So I'll amend it to $29,590.48. And you're seconding that. I second the amendment. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Roll call. Hugh Session? Yes. Gianotti? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Okay, that ends my report. Uh, Finance and Administration Committee, Trustee Session. Thank you very much. Uh, so, first off, bills have been included for your review. Uh, there any questions? Very nice yeah. new sheet. Yeah, the new format. So, uh, no additions since there's no bowl. Correct, we cut off on right. Friday now. Okay. We shouldn't have additions. There should be any additions. Okay, excellent. So in that case, I'll make a motion for uh, approval of the bills in total $138,164.82. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. Gross? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Giannotti? Yes. Possession? Yes. Next up, uh, results of budget workshop held on Saturday. Uh, so, in short, the Finance and Administration Committee met on Saturday morning for roughly four hours with village staff and reviewed the draft budget for 23-24 fiscal year. Uh, various productive discussions were had and the need was recognized to ensure that adequate funds were allocated for an overlap period when hiring the new village administrator upon the retirement of Bob Barber. Uh, minor changes were made to the existing draft and the next step will be an official budget workshop with the entire village board, most likely at the time of the second meeting in March. Bob, do you have anything you want to add? No, I think we're going to move that meeting to 7 p.m. If there was consensus, mm -hmm. but we'll do that next meeting. Okay. It'll stay, it'll stay out at the TPW shop, so you can get your shop clean. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, next up, fuel pricing for 2023 has been established by the Intergovernmental Fuel Committee. Four bids were received for fuel, and the lowest bid was from Will DuPage FS. Prices for the coming year will be $3.12 for unleaded, which is currently at $3.36, and $3.71 for diesel, currently $3.63. Please see the enclosed bid tab sheets. Uh, and then lastly, personnel manual draft has been released to the committee. Once the committee reviews the document, it will be released to the union stewards for review. After everyone signs off, it will then be released to the full board for consideration. The goal is to complete this project by April 30th. And the mayor is ready. 
Yeah. And she beat the committee. Yeah. She beat the committee. So if you have <laughs> yeah, a yeah. chance, you and Jonathan need to read it and then fix that. Yeah. 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 I'm working on it. <laughs> it's exciting. Right? Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, but that concludes my report this time. All righty. Public Buildings and Properties, Parks and Recreation Committee, Trustee G and I. Okay. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> I'll try not to stumble to anything. Uh, I'd like to start off by considering a uh, bid award. Uh, for the HVAC project in the food stand at Fireman's Park uh, at 675 Gould Street. Actually, Penfield. Oh, oh I got food. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I could Jeez. recognize that one. 675 Penfield Street, uh, contingent upon receipt of executed grant agreement. Uh, this is a Will County ARPA grant project. Uh, two bids were received and opened. Uh, both are closed for your review. Uh, so the bid that the lowest bid was, oh geez, I have to find it again. Should have marked it. Uh, where was I? I hit it and I lost it. Oh. Here it is. Okay. So the uh, lowest bid came from Sunray uh, Heating out of Madsen, Illinois, in the amount of. Uh, Twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars, um, and uh, the other bid was from L and H for twenty-nine thousand four hundred twenty-five dollars and twenty-three cents. Uh, so, I would like to move forward and make a motion uh, awarding the bid for the HVAC project in the food stand at Fireman's Park, six seventy-five Penfield Street, uh, contingent upon the receipt of the executed grant agreement. Uh, to Sunray Heating out of Madsen, Illinois, in the amount of $27,500. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? There's a second, but I got a question after that. <coughs> um, is the one in LH, they had an option in there. Is their original price still um, uh, more than Sunray, or did Sunray include that option that LH had in there? The option from LH was to install a security cage around the unit. Is there? Uh, yes, they they are still the lowest. So they're, it was uh, still the lowest. Yes, by uh, three hundred. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. it's the top line. Sorry, okay. I forgot they had an option on there. Yeah, they were three hundred and eighty-five dollars. But that that's either included or not in the summary one. We're not doing that. The summary one did not include that option. That wasn't part of the spec for the state project. Okay. Was there a second? I've lost track. Okay. <laughs> Discussion? Roll call? I need them both at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> Possession? Yes. Giannotti? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Krauss? Yes. Okay. Uh, consider a proposal in the amount of $7,910 for the purchase of recycled rubber mulch <coughs> for the extension on the playground and fireman's park. Uh, please see the enclosed review. Uh, the Closed proposal for review. So I would like to make a motion uh, considering the proposal in the amount of $7,910 for the purchase of recycled rubber, rubber mulch for the playground extension at Fireman's Park. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. Krause? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Jean yes. Possession? Yes. Okay, uh, the school district uh, has approved the intergovernmental agreement for Project Pickle. Uh, we will now start executing the plan. Uh, uh, at the last meeting, a rendering of the proposed improvements were discussed. And uh, Matt, did you have an update on that one? Um, the company that we're, American Seal Coating, that we're going to be hopefully approving here in the next couple motions were, are unable to provide a CAD draft of that so they're going to come out on site um, once the, their proposal is approved they'll come out on site and actually paint mark where everything's at so that way we can kind of get a visual of what's they'll string it basically basically yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they were actually they actually made a couple corrections to the measurements correct from our original they did um, I, I get it it wasn't a perfect drive no <laughs> <laughs> no I'm just letting you know. I, I know. so they yeah. did they did try to make a CAD draft <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to consider a motion 
waiving the bid requirements for the rehabilitation of the high school tennis courts, uh, better known as Project Pickle. Uh, since there is no CAD drawing or exact specifications for this project and it exceeds $25,000, there is a need for the board by a three-quarter vote to approve the waiving of bids for the installation of this project. Uh, three proposals were solicited and two proposals were received. Uh, and this will be discussed in the following action item. So I would like to make a motion waiving the bid requirements for the rehabilitation of the high school tennis courts. Uh, Project Pickle. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call? Possession? Yes. Ginati? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Kraus? Yes. Okay. I'd like to consider a proposal in the amount of $68,205 from American Seal Coating of Michigan City, Indiana for the installation of pickleball, basketball, and futsal courts on the high school property. Uh, two proposals were received and are enclosed. The lower proposal actually includes additional work including the exterior fencing and repair of the existing fencing. Uh, this project will come in about uh, $110,000, including the asphalt work, which is $5,000 under the budgeted amount of $115,000. Uh, however, we still need to address uh, photo cell and timer issues with the lights. So I would like to make a motion uh, accepting the proposal in the amount of $68,205 from American Seal Coating of Michigan City and Indiana for the, for the installation of pickleball, basketball, futsal courts on the high school property. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Yeah. Can we get our <clears throat> access point in and out, like our gate that we wanted with this proposal? Yeah, there will be a gate on each end. It's repairing that in order and, if, and if this motion is approved, the only thing we got left to do is put a timer on the lights and then project space will be done. Um, if we decide to do cameras, I know there was discussion back and forth with the school district on their camera system. So we can um, add a camera and put it into their system? Right. Okay. Yes. Um, the futsal goal or nets still needs to be purchased. And yeah, the lighting timer, I believe, is it. So mm -hmm. There may be a change order depending on what their layout consists of, to, if, depending on if um, the futsal court and the basketball court end up in the same general area. If we included in this is a 10 foot tall net that encapsulates the futsal court so that way the soccer ball isn't flying into the pickleball area and things of that nature, obviously. Um, we may turn that L shaped fence net into a T and encapsulate both the um, futsal and the basketball and then the pickleball courts would be separate from those two so um, depending on how it's laid out um, trustee Kraus and I discussed it a little bit and depending on how they lay it out we may um, see about the cost of doing a change order on that to add the <coughs> 10 foot fetting and fencing in some other areas so. okay. any more discussion roll call Kraus yes Stacy Yes. Terry? Yes. Kinati? Yes. Possession? Yes. Okay. Uh, consider a proposal in the amount of $21,500 from Irwin Construction for a complete rehabilitation of the Fireman's Park footbridge. Uh, this project is coming in quite a bit more than we originally budgeted, uh, but there is funding from other projects in the park coming in at less than we budgeted to cover this proposal. Uh, this will include a nice wood planked bridge. Uh, with black metal railing similar to that of the boardwalk on Gould Street. Uh, please see the enclosed proposal. Uh, another thing just to add to that, we initially were doing a completely different bridge when we first talked about this. So we went from steel grating and steel um, railing <coughs> to uh, this wood bridge that we uh, come to now. So I would like to make a motion to approve the proposal in the amount of $21,500 from Irwin Construction for a complete rehabilitation of the Fireman's Park footbridge. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. I just have one thing. The Public Works Department will be doing the demo of the existing bridge before Irwin's come in to do their rehabilitation of it. So. 
Just so you know, we will have a little bit of work to do beforehand. Roll call. Possession. Yes. Giannotti. Yes. Terry. Yes. Stacy. <coughs> yes. And Krause. Yes. Timing on that bridge. Do you know? Um. Not specifically. I'm trying to get it worked so that way the footbridge and the lighting project around the path are happening at the same time. So that way the park's only closed or non-usable for you know a week or so. Hopefully we can get it all done at the same time. This is my goal. Would that be um, after the fourth? Oh no. Before. No, no, no. Before. No. This will be yeah, April. So this will be a few weeks. Yeah. This will be like Aprilish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Try and do yeah. this with the lighting and the lighting and all that's going to be done in April. A meeting, or we, I don't know if we have an update on that, I'm, maybe I'm jumping ahead, but a meeting with M3 tomorrow. I was supposed to meet with them today at 9 a.m., but due to the weather, we moved it to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning instead just to rewalk the walking path and, and stuff. So I'm going to try to get both of those projects completed at the same time. Okay. What's, what's the time for the bridge? Did they give us a, like, a time frame? How long it, that it'll take them? Yeah. Less than a week, they said, but that's all weather contingent and things like yeah. that, so... Uh, consider a proposal in the amount of $8,376.24 from B&D Design to replace the breaker boxes for the ball field lights and scoreboards in Fireman's Park. Uh, these are the original panels from the early 1970s and are literally rusting away and separating from their supports. Uh, this project is being done for safety and for future use of the panels for the ball fields. Uh, $5,000 was budgeted for this project, but other projects in the park have come in in much less allowing this to be funded as well. So these, just to reiterate, these are the uh, breaker boxes on the south end of the park uh, near the parking lot and the uh, fire memorial. So uh, I would like to make a motion accepting the proposal in the amount of $8,376.24 from B&D Design to replace the breaker boxes for the ball field lights and scoreboards in Fireman's Park. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second for <coughs> discussion. Roll call. Kraus? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Gennady? Yes. Possession? <coughs> yes. Uh, Department of Corrections approves the village's plan for the Processing area of the new police facility. Uh, this is a major step in the process for finalizing our floor plans. Uh, we are still trying to maximize the size of the community training room, and once this is completed, we will be ready to go to complete design. We are also redesigning the wet bottom pond to reflect what the board desired for this feature. Uh, the most recent plans are enclosed for your review, but are not the final plan. And you approve the HVAC plan, correct? Yes, I looked that over, yeah. Okay, so once we get this community meeting room issue resolved, we're going to come to the next board meeting, approve the floor plan, and go to full design so we go to bid. Okay. So, so that's what I hope the next board, next meeting will approve. Yeah. So. And that concludes my report. Thank you. So I have a question on that proposal. Oh. <coughs> um, it says that LED sign is desired facing Route 1. Discuss that with the police department. I just completely missed that. Or that's been something that we've discussed numerous times. That we at some point in time we may want an LED sign like the one we have here, north of the car wash on. So this is in the future, not included in this bid. Correct. Okay. We are running a two hundred amp service out to the pond as part of this project. So if we need to aerate those ponds, we'll have the ability to do that. But the aerators themselves are something we can buy down the road. Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee, Trustee Stacy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission conducts a hearing on proposed tobacco store at 997 Dixie Highway last Thursday night. The hearing was continued to March 23rd because the petitioner was not present and sent a proxy that was unable to answer the questions. And that's my report. And for any of you who were not there, um, it was interesting. So the, the petitioner did not show up. Um, his, he was ill or something. His attorney he called, what, right at 4.30 or 4.25? He, he was sick and he was unable to come. So um, three people came that were 
loosely Somehow related. related or unrelated. Yeah, I'm not sure. And uh, if they were related, they were indirectly related. Indirectly right. related. Yes. Well, the one was going to be his partner. Yes, and um, you know, they there was there was some testimony at the public hearing regarding some issues with uh, some of the petitioners' other locations, and you know, they expressed their uh, dislike for the fact that some you know. Uh, things had come up that were not really approved. Um, but they wanted to kind of switch at the meeting and have someone else take over the project, which is not something that was anything we could authorize at a public hearing. So uh, they were told to go back to the drawing board, decide amongst themselves what they want to do, if anything, and come back next month. So and has the PCC still even <coughs> received any answers from the questions they submitted? which would have been the prior meeting a month or two months before? No. So the, the current petitioner still hasn't even responded to the original meeting that PCC had with specific questions? Correct. And in okay. deference to his application fee, we continued the hearing. The PCC probably would have been within every right to close the hearing and recommend denial, but to give the benefit of the doubt to the petitioner, they continued the hearing for another month. I don't anticipate that process continuing. But we'll see. We left the door open for him. But I just, if, if, if I was a petitioner, I'd be on the phone right away saying, oh, we're not below. haven't heard from him yet. So. It was, it was different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Trustee Terry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in reference with the staffing levels at the police department, um, we're still looking to uh, fill a vacancy of Officer Schwab. We've received a few or a couple of uh, applications. I'll be getting with the Public Safety Commission and we'll be setting up interviews uh, shortly. And then in reference with our uh, discussions with the <coughs> Fire District Board um, in reference to their inspection program, uh, we met, Trustee uh, DeForest and I met last week uh, with Trustee Waterman, and they are asking for, uh, I would say, the easiest way to put it is, is, is they have decided that um, they wanted to review the performance plan or their improvement plan um, for the actual, uh, I, I won't call it for, for the IGA, but it's going to be an, it's an improvement plan for the inspector. And so uh, the timeline uh, within their performance plan is uh, they want to assess it three months and then they want to uh, wait another six months and then maybe review it annually. Uh, so I explained uh, to them and Trustee Kapoor explained to them that, you know, the timelines may, may be uh, something that we're looking to conquer now instead of later down the road uh, due to the fact that we've had issues in the past and how you had brought up many meetings with the fire chief and um, you know, I, I, includes, uh, I included the uh, performance improvement plan. Uh, Lieutenant Tim McGannon is going to oversee uh, the inspector uh, and then there's different training requirements that uh, the inspector is going to go to and, and try to improve his customer service relations and uh, you know, just different things as far as trying to be successful with uh, customer service and the fire department personnel. So um, that's pretty much where we're at. I advise them that we would bring this to the board and, and uh, further the discussion is to see um, you know, before we actually discuss the IGA, I, I don't think that the fire district trustees, I don't think there was any discretions as far as, you know, when, when we met the first time and we went over the different updates or, or revisions on the wording from the IGA, I don't think that there was any dispute or anything that, that, that would cause a problem, you know, with, with negotiating how we would reword the IGA. I, I think everybody was in favor with the IGA. Our biggest thing is, is you know, the, the, the inspector and how he's going about and doing the inspections. 
Yeah, I guess um, my only comment, and I'm all about giving somebody a chance and giving them the training they need to be able to do the job. Um, you know, my only concern is, like I said, I've had multiple meetings in the past where this seems to have just kind of keeps going south. <clears throat> um, but they do have a plan now. I actually got a voicemail today while I was at work, and I have not called her back because I know we had a meeting, but Marge Cook left me a voicemail um, with a request that their whole fire board meet with our entire village board to talk about. Yes, we did, we did discuss that. <clears throat> so I don't know, if, yeah, that's something you guys have, were interested in, agree to, whatever. Um, I did not, I got the call earlier, I couldn't call her at work, and then after work I says, let me just wait until our meeting's over with. Uh, so that I have something to, to go back to her with. So yes, we did we did say that because uh, we brought up our example. Uh, Trustee Kapoor's brought up the example with our school resource officer and how we were um, how we resolved our issues with the with the school board with the SRO. And that was one of the things that we brought. Up. Do, you, do you know what the purpose was? What their interest was in having all of the boards meet? Um. I, I think it's because uh, Trustee Kapoor's and I were representing the board, and there was other, uh, you know, I mean, at the time, uh, we, we met with two of the trustees, and I think um, it would be better for all the trustees to hear, you know, and, and, and voice out our opinions, even though, I mean, we're going, coming back and we're telling everybody, you know, what, what transpired in the meeting, but um, if another trustee has a specific general question and they want to have the answer, that we would all be able to, you know, mediate. mediate and, and well, and I must plan. admit, yeah, it kind of seems like some of the trustees that we're meeting with are unaware of some of the issues that we've had in the past too. So there's, you know, there's some communication breakdowns through the process. So what what in this three and nine month annual that annual review? I mean, they're, I don't want to say admitting, but they're acknowledging the fact that their employee, I mean, it says right down there, deficiencies. So he's deficient in something, they're admitting that. So the probably two or three years has been going on with this employee. You've had your own meetings. I have met with them, including the inspector and the chief. Uh, Trustee Terry and I have met with them at least twice before. I remember at least once. Yeah. Okay, so at least once. So we're talking years now. This isn't like this has been going on for 60 days, six months. This is years, and there's been no change. Um, so w what's three or six months going to do? I mean, they've known about this for years. Maybe not they as the entire board, but certain employees of this fire department have known about this for years. This issue may or may not have been addressed. I don't know what meetings they had, but it's, the issue's not been solved. I don't think any, anybody at the board level here has a problem with the system itself. It's the individual that's in that system. And that's what we pretty much explained. Um, and, and, you know, we, we did say that, and that's that was that was their defense. Uh, the trustees did not have any knowledge of that situation. Um, and that's what kept being, that's what was brought to us. And, and they said, you know what, as, as a board, um, they wanted to give, uh, you know, an opportunity to the inspector and they wanted to give him an opportunity um, to be able to correct his, himself even though even though he knows it's been an issue for years. They for some reason think that and the trust six months are going to be right. magic. The trustees are saying that they were unaware of the situation. This was their way of resolving. Mm -hmm. And so um, and that's what we had explained to Trustee Waterman for uh, on the fire district and uh, that's why we said maybe it would be best for all the trustees to get together and we could express ourselves and to, as to specifically why and explain why. I believe she mentioned March 8th in the voicemail, but I'm not going to swear to that. I think it's a Wednesday night. Um, but I can call her and send an email if you guys are interested in you know, that, having that kind would of satisfy a... the requirement that you would <clears throat> Yeah, because according to the IGA, I'm supposed to meet with the head of the fire board, which is Marge Cook. So, you know, if she and I meet independently, we're still kind of in the same place we are now. Um, this might be better. This might be better if everybody gets in a room together and then, you know, we don't have to be concerned with the three, six, nine month thing or year thing at this point. Maybe we just need to sit down and then see what the outcome of that meeting is. And then make our 
their decision. But I, I believe me, I'm, I'm with you, Todd. <laughs> can we can we put this? So the process is, um, if we want to get rid of the IG, we'd have to put it for our next meeting and then vote to abolish it. And then no, I'm sorry, notice would have to be given. Thirty days. Now. And then thirty days. Mm -hmm. Can we put this? Can we put this on for next month? And we can always table it. We don't have to do anything. We can either table it or we can say, no, we're not going to get rid of it. Um, but personally, I'd like to see this on the agenda. I mean, I, you're right. Like Trustee Terry said, we had an issue with the school. <coughs> Luckily, we found out about it. It wasn't the program that was in the original. We took care of it. And is that not an extremely successful program now? Mm -hmm. I mean, it went from the school looking to get rid of it because they didn't like what was going on to now I'm sure they would hate to lose the SRO we had. So, I mean, we can take care of it in a matter of would you sell that issue in 30 days? I mean, 60 oh. days? Yeah. I'm trying to give you some credit here, Chief. Very short. Yeah. 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 The Chief saw that. Um, yeah. Well, we could. The next meeting is March 13th. And if the 8th or sometime thereabouts is adequate for everyone. We could still do the meeting with the trustees if we like, and that might give us some further direction. And if we need a table in the next meeting, we can we table, table it. it. I, yeah, I, if I we like can't to get together. It on there. Um, I mean, I, I don't doubt that the trustees didn't know about this. Oh, um, absolutely. But I mean, I, I guess the way I look at it is, I mean, they're, they're willing to put the entire program <clears throat> online for one individual that's had issues for years. Not recent, this is years. Multiple meetings, multiple people. I mean, it just, I, I don't see what the point of this is. But, I'm, I mean, I, I would like to hear what they say or what they've been told. Um, but I'm not sure when, um, I can't remember when they're hired, just when the trustees actually meet. Um, I would be in favor of putting that on the agenda. I would, I would try and see if um, if we meet with them on the 8th and then you know the trustees will actually have an opportunity for uh, them to meet and I would say evaluate mm -hmm. the program and, and how what we you know the conclusion whatever conclusions they come to uh, will determine on what we need to you know what we need to do as a board with the IGA. I mean, and I think another issue we had is sort of turned into inspectional services instead of fire safety. I mean, we're going to want to amend this thing either way, aren't we? Mm -hmm. That's some of the other issues that were brought up that this is no longer exactly fire safety, it's inspectional services, which we don't want. There, I, I would predict there will still be changes to the IGA one way or the other. But. <clears throat> so the board meets on March 23rd. And I will, I will give her a call tomorrow and then shoot an email to everybody. Um, if they've done the work, we'll table it. We have to table for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. And if you meet Marjorie, you can go up to folks. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I'll give her a call. Both here or there. Or where. Yep. And that concludes my report. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. We got a lot of room in that nice fire station. Yes, they do. All right, Public Works Committee, Trustee Krause. The Sewer Department monthly report is in, uh, closed uh, for January. It's a meeting proposed for the residents and businesses along Penfield. Uh, scheduled meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March 14th <coughs> at 7 p.m. at Washington Township Center. The purpose of this meeting is to provide the workflow schedule to the residents and how it affects access to their driveways. Basically, the way the streets are going to be shut down during the Penfield project. Uh, we also want to introduce them to the engineer assigned to the field. That will be their point of contact. We're working on parking solutions for uh, those affected homeowners during construction. He had this special feature field of all the debris that allows to use their parking lot to override parking for the residents east of Pitalpa, but that's going to take a lot of pressure off. And we'll work, we got to work with the police department on the plan for that. So, that's all I have. Okay. Economic Development Community Relations Committee, Trustee U Session. Thank you very much. Uh, consider a resolution supporting the use of tax increment financing for economic development. The IML is asking us to support, uh, asking for support uh, for a
resolution to defend TIF uh, in Springfield from a barrage of anti-TIF bills coming out of the General Assembly. It is recommended that the resolution be approved. Uh, so I will make a motion to uh, support the use of tax increment financing for economic development. And it is resolution number 2023-03. There is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call. Possession? Yes. Giannotti? Yes. Terry? <coughs> yes. Stacy? Yes. Krauss? Yes. Thank you. Uh, consider a motion authorizing a village attorney to draft an ordinance to extend the moratorium on all tap-in and impact fees on new residential construction until December 30th, 2024. The current moratorium lasts until December 30th, 2023, and staff is already being asked by builders about a 2024 start. The builders are arguing they are losing one year to supply chain issues, and rising mortgage rates have not helped the new housing market. We would then establish a permit fee of about $1,750 in 2024, since safe build is entitled to an increase in the fees they charge. It is $1,500 for 2023. <coughs> Staff recommends approval since we need to have at least a few new housing starts each year, and jacking the fee back up to $14,500 will not help that cause. Please see the enclosed current ordinance. Uh, so I'll make the motion approving the village attorney, authorize the village attorney to draft an ordinance to extend the moratorium on all tap and impact fees on new residential construction through December 30th, 2024. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? There's a second. <laughs> There's a motion and a second. Discussion? Okay. Roll call. Right. Krauss? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Terry? Yes. Shinati? Yes. Possession? Yes. Okay. Any old business to come before the board? Um, new business, uh, actually, Trustee Kaporis uh, talked to me last week about an idea. Uh, we know that the school board is going for a referendum. Um, to try to fund the school district, and some of our uh, commissions have asked if they could go on record as uh, favoring it, and we're trying to stay on the right side of, of you know pr what's proper. So um, he suggested, and it's not on the agenda, so it's nothing we would vote on. Is would we be interested in going on record as some kind of resolution um, to uh, basically to show our support of the school referendum. Is that about right? Yeah, and what is the basis of the support? Is there usually put in the resolution of reason? Is it for the the, property values? Uh, property state? values, you know, when you have a good school district, your, your property values are higher. Um, yeah. Yeah, draws people to the uh, community, yep. you know. As opposed to people moving out of the community. Exactly. community. What does anyone think? I'd be in support of it. I agree, yeah. I support it as well. I mean, I would put money into the school. I would put you know, Project Pickles, prime, you know, it's a prime example. I mean, we're supporting yep. them. Yep. Absolutely. I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I feel comfortable. I mean, then does the township come up with a reference? I mean, I understand what the school is asking. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> my personal opinion because I don't think I'm allowed to. Um, I'm going to yes out here. Um, I just don't know if it's proper for a board to do that. Um, and honestly, does everybody here know all the issues? I mean, I still have questions that, and I've watched every video, everything they've put out. Um, I mean, again, I'm one vote, if everyone goes for it, go for it. Uh, I just sort of, you know, I'm weighing in on how, how proper that is for us to. And actually, we can shoot an email to um, Tim Kuiper also to make sure that it's something that's legal for us to do, even if we want to do it. And again, just getting consensus as to, you know, where you're headed with it. Yeah, I, just, I guess my only thing is like, uh, for, maybe it's just the way I think, or, you know, it's not even an issue I'm thinking it is, but like, where do we... Where, 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 does it start? where does this stop? Yeah. I mean, we did a referendum. We did our work to get the word out there. The police department did the work to get out there for the referendum. And I think that's why we're successful. I'm not saying they're not doing that, obviously. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they came to us and asked for this. Um, 
And I don't know because it, it came from uh, it came from Trustee Kapora. So, mm -hmm. and, and in all honesty, too, you know, if, if we do support this, and that's fine. But what do we do down the road if another taxing body comes to us, and even a more controversial one? And says we want your support, but you the school so why don't you do it for us? Now you're forced to pick and choose well, which support. referendums you're supporting, and that's really not our job. Is I mean, I, I, I think it's a very legitimate. And when I looked at this, I looked at it as you're right. If, if they don't get this, where are our property values go? So <clears> when I debated this, it was how much is it going to cost me, like realistically out of pocket, compared to my home might not be worth five, ten years down the road because we have a failing school system. That's the debate I did. But I mean is that facts that we can present to you yeah, know, what to the community. Yeah. And the only person that has come to me um, asked if we could put something up on our sign about it. So and I just said eh, I don't I mean, know. It's just to get awareness of the referendum. Like, I mean yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. put something up. That could be some. That could be something that we can agree to. We're not going out supporting it, but we will provide the school district access to our platforms yes, to get the word out. <clears throat> and you make your own decision. But and we, they were asked, could we post their videos on our website mm -hmm. and on our Facebook page? And I wouldn't do that unless <clears throat> I had the authority of you guys to say, yeah, do that. You know, I mean, their videos and stuff. That's just information they're putting out, right? I mean, correct. Like, I, it, correct. Will County comes to us. Comes to you know, they're collecting batteries, or, you know, hazardous waste schools, and we put that out, right? That's just information that's not, I mean, even the videos they're putting out, they can't say yes or no, correct? They just, mm -hmm. here's the facts and the information. So, I mean, we could do that for them, couldn't we? Like, the post through videos. Through. I, mean, I don't I think, think we would make that decision on our own. That would be with board yeah, approval. Yeah, board approval. Because then, you know, you can put, it, you can put any referendum on there, and that's what you have to be careful for. Well, and I would be... To be honest, I would be more comfortable with putting it out on the Facebook page, an announcement, rather than linking it onto our website. When you put it on our official website, it becomes something that's more affiliated with us, as opposed to saying, you know, school district has a referendum, you know, there's a link. Um, but again, you know, when you get with signage, it's like, how, how far did we go? Are we willing to put something on the sign about it? Say, there is a distinctive legal difference between each individual saying we support the referendum. And doing it, and as, doing a it as a corporate entity. Yeah. There's a, there's a vast difference there. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure every one of us could make an individual statement saying we support or not support right. the referendum. But <clears throat> when you do it as a corporate entity, it gives the uh, legitimacy of the, of the corporate entity saying that it needs to be done. Right. And it's a little different. And I don't know if that's a road you want to go down. Not that I don't support the school district. Yeah. But down the road, what you know, what's what's in that road? We've never done that before. So it's an interesting debate, you know. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I know the township had their big open space referendum and they were going everywhere trying to get support for that and we were quiet because it really wasn't in the village limits. Their open space and they wanted that time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's well, a tough one. I, it's yeah. something that, as an individual, we all want to see happen, but mm -hmm. you throw the weight of the corporate authority behind it. Yeah, I'm a firm believer of it takes a, you know, it takes a village, you know, it takes a community, and I don't think the property taxes is the only thing that you know is going to be affected here if it doesn't get passed. Um, you know, I mean, if they're talking about cutting sports and they're talking about in different programs uh, that a lot of these students are, are actually actively in right now. Now you have them doing what? Could Roman, be extra police. Roaming Roman the streets, yeah. you know, um, you know, leaving <clears throat> an opportunity for mischief. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, in the past, I know there's not very good numbers on that when the school districts seem to fail referendums and they, they cut their programs, you know. District 206 was one of those, and there was a lot of, a lot of problems, um, you know, when those referendums didn't go through. Um, as far as with, you know, with the villages and with the kids uh, running the streets, public safety, and safety for the kids too, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, ask the attorney if it's legal and the majority of the board wants to do it. Then I mean, it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's check with him first. I haven't talked to you for a while. Well, I says this was not an agenda item anyhow, but before we put it on and, you know. All 
All right, any other new business to come before the board? Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Hmm? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All right, the roll call. Possession? Yes. Do you have any discussion? Yes. Terry? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Krause? Yes.